33 through 37. You can follow along in your pew Bibles if you'd like to. John 18, 33 through 37 says, Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for this text. And Lord, we pray that, that we might glean from the text, dear Lord, all the riches that lie within that we might apply to our lives. And Father, we pray that as we hear this word proclaimed, that you would speak to each of us individually by the power of your spirit. Father, also anoint me that as I speak, Lord, you speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Just a while ago, we were playing this little game with the kids, and they, uh, they knew the voices pretty well. Not long ago, uh, Sean and I were in Burks in Alexandria, and I have allergies a lot of time. My secretary, she's very sweet. She doesn't say anything about it, but I know I drive her crazy because I'm always, <clears throat> always clearing my throat. And so when I'm at Burks, uh, Shauna goes over to the baby section to admire all the baby stuff, and I go to the restroom, you know? And, and I come out, and I'm looking at all the shoes on one side of the store, she's on the other, and I'm going, <coughs> <coughs> and in just a few minutes, Shauna comes over, and she says, Hey, I followed you, because I could hear your voice through the whole store, and so I found you because you were clearing your throat. Well, when I was a boy, I grew up on a farm where my dad had a lot of cattle, and I don't know if you've ever heard anybody call cattle. But in the wintertime, you put the cows on one pasture and the grass is dead and all this stuff, you feed them hay. While in March of the next year, the other pasture you're going to put them in, all the grass turns green. Well, the problem is that one pasture is up here and the other pasture is about a quarter of a mile down here. And not only that, but when you go to the pasture to let all these cows and try to get them to follow you, they're sprinkled all over the pasture. But my father had a certain yodel that he could use had a certain yell that he could yell, and all the cows would come running, and it sounded something like this. And all the cows would start mooing, and wherever they were in the pasture, they would come running. Well, now my job is to be down at the other gate a quarter of a mile away, and I'm supposed to open the gap, and the only thing separating them from freedom is the highway. You know, and when they come out, my father's called them, he lets the gate down, and he makes that yell, and I promise you, this sort of looks like the Pied Piper of cattle. He's coming, and there's 30, 40, 50 cows all walking behind him while he's yelling this yodel, this big yodel. And as soon as he gets to the other pasture, he steps to the side, and all the cows rush into that fertile, lush, green pasture, and they start eating because they know his voice. And Sean knows my voice. And people know your voice. Just by speaking, people know your voice. But how well do we know the voice of the Lord? How well do we know the voice of Jesus Christ? Well, there's something that's going on here. And if you want to follow along, you can. But I want to show you some of the things that are taking place. Some of the things going on in these scriptures. The Bible says in verse 33, Then Pilate entered the praetorium again. Now, what is the praetorium? The praetorium is the courthouse, you might say. It's where the governor lives. And it's interesting that they had governors in Rome back then, but Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judah and Samaria. And it was there that people were condemned or sentenced for crimes, and the chief priests had led Jesus to Pilate to be condemned, right? So Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews, he says. Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? 
Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? So what's taking place here is you've got the governor of this province here, and then you've got Jesus. You've got God, creator of the world, and you've got these two beings having this conversation. You know what my question was when I heard this? My question was, well, where's the chief priest during all this? Have you ever been to court? You go into the courtroom and you see this thing going on and the audience is full of people and the, and the judge is up there and the lawyers are out here and, and the condemned is over in the sign. That's not what was happening here. It was just the judge and Jesus. That's all that was in this room. So where were those who wanted to prosecute him? Where were those who wanted him condemned to death? I'm going to back up here to verse 28. To verse number uh, 28, which, which says this. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium, and it was early morning, but they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should be defiled. It's interesting that the chief priests, who were doing something so unclean, were not going into the courtroom, because the courtroom belonged to a Gentile, and a Gentile is me and you. You see, they didn't want to get their feet muddy. They didn't want to get dirty by going into the home owned by a Gentile, much less a Roman Gentile at that. So they were practicing something called works righteousness. They were still practicing that old, it's what I do that makes me holy. It's what I do that makes me righteous. Do we still do that today? Do we get caught up in that trap of believing that what we do is actually going to make us holy and righteous and pure before God? We do it all the time. Now, when I was going through high school, I've told this to, uh, before, but I had to go to PE. And one of the things that our coach made, to do, made us do was play shirts and skins, if you're familiar with shirts and skins, which means you had to take off your shirt. I don't want to take off my shirt. Because the girls are on the other end of the court, the cheerleaders are down there, and I'm 175 pounds, 6'2", and, and I had to run around in the shower to get wet. I mean, I was really skinny. I was not the full macho man that I am today, you know? <laughs> I was lacking, I was lacking so much physically, and I knew it, and I was embarrassed. So the coach said, he made this rule, if you don't get undressed in your shorts and your shirt, your shirt for PE at the end of the six weeks, I'm gonna give you an F. And so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna befriend this guy. He's married to my mom's helper's daughter. He's almost family. I know him real well. I'm gonna become the teacher's pet. And maybe by doing all of that, he will just give me a big A because I'm his buddy, because I'm his close friend. For six weeks, I played basketball in jeans and shirt and tennis shoes. I did not put on my PE clothes. And guess what I get the, got at the end of the six weeks? A big, fat, red F. How many of you can say you've ever gotten an F in PE? I am one of them. Choir, anybody? Got an F in PE. See, I was trying to go about it a different way. And to get into heaven, folks, we can't go about it a different way. We can't. Because, and this is coming up. The Bible says in verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servant would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from here. Why does he keep saying that? If his kingdom's not of this world, then where's his kingdom of? You ever thought about that? Where's the kingdom of heaven? Where is it? Where's the kingdom of God? The Bible keeps saying the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Well, I think it's in three places, and the first one is this. When Jesus came to earth, the kingdom of God had come to earth. Why? Because the king of the kingdom was here. So the kingdom is here on earth. Where else is the kingdom of God? Well, it's up there, isn't it? In the invisible realm, that place that we all, the church wants to be one day, the kingdom of God. One day, we're going to be walking in the kingdom of God. The third place that it is. You know, it was interesting because last September I got to go to Massachusetts and I got to see the uh, Plymouth Rock and I got to get on the Mayflower and walk around. When those pilgrims came to the New World, guess whose flag they planted there? I claim this in the name of King George or whatever the king is of Great Britain. British flag flew. British flag. St. Augustine, Florida. When the Spaniards came over, 
And they found in Florida, whose flag flew in Florida for a while? Spain's. Spain's. When Napoleon was king of France, or he was not king of France, but military general, whose flag flew in this state? In this state? French. At one time, different flags claimed parts of this country. Folks, the kingdom of God. I want you to take a look at this flag. This is one we hardly ever pay attention to. But what flag is this? This is the Christian flag. That Christian flag is planted right here in the kingdom that means the most. Because each of us are the kingdom of God when we allow Christ to come into our life. Did you know that? This is the kingdom that God wants to conquer. This one right here. Is his flag planted in your heart? It's interesting. Jesus was standing before Pilate. You know what his name means in the Greek? It means armed with a spear. It's not coincidence that Jesus was stabbed in the side with a what? A spear. A spear. By a Roman. Okay? Because there's no coincidence in that. The Romans conquered by what? A spear. The Roman Empire was huge. How did they get so big? They fought and took everything they could. How did they do it? With a spear. So how does the kingdom of God, how does God conquer for the kingdom of God? Does he use a spear? No. What's his weapon? What's God's weapon to conquer this kingdom? Love. Love. It's love. And when you feel that love in your heart, and you accept it, he plants his flag there, and he claims you for his own. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome to think about it like that. So here's the last thing that's going on here. Pilate said to him, are you a king then? Listen to what he says. Jesus said to him, you say rightly that I am king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Folks, what is truth? Truth is anything printed in this book. This is truth. Anything printed in this book, anything printed in red in this scripture, that's truth. He says that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who hears the truth hears my voice. Who was he talking to? Who was Jesus talking to? He was talking to Pilate. Anyone who hears my voice Here's the truth. What was Jesus doing there? Now, I don't know how it is when you get in trouble, but sometimes I make every excuse in the world. Have you ever seen that show, Bait Car? Yeah. It's the funniest show. The police take this car, they set it on a sidewalk, they leave the keys in it, engine running, doors open, kids walk by, gang members, ah, oh, check it out, man. Nobody's in that car, you know. I'm going to go jump in it. Lo and behold, they do. Little do they know that the cops are right there. The cops can lock the doors. They can turn off the car. And there's a stereo or a microphone inside the car that they're saying, put your hands on the steering wheel. This is the police. It's the funniest thing in the world. What do those kids do when the police come to their window and cuff them and drag them out of the car? What do they do? They make one excuse after another. I even heard one of these one of people one of these people say, and Sean can back me up. That wasn't me you saw driving that car. That <laughs> wasn't even me that was doing that. <laughs> he actually literally did that. When people are accused of a crime, what do they do? They make excuses after excuse after excuse. Think about this now. Jesus is standing before the judge who was going to condemn him in just a moment. Did you hear Jesus making any excuses? Instead, he was saying, I am the king of the Jews. Hey, guess what? You just said it too. It's on your lips. You heard me say it. Are you going to accept it? Jesus was ministering to Pontius Pilate. He was actually trying to save his soul. You know what happens in the next few moments? He's arrested, he's flogged, he's beaten, thorn, crown, crown of thorn, all that stuff. But before that, he's ministering to Pilate. 
He was letting Pilate hear his voice. Folks, this morning, I want to ask you, do you hear that same voice speaking to you? He wasn't concerned about himself. He was concerned about Pilate. He's concerned about you too. Do you hear that voice this morning? If you don't, it's talking to you. It talks to you every day. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for your voice that speaks to us. We thank you that, dear Lord, you're, you're not here to condemn or, or to try or judge us. You're just simply here to, to save us. You want to plant that flag in our heart. You want to conquer the kingdom that is our lives. That's why you came. And Father, we thank you for that. And we ask that you would forgive us for trying to obtain holiness by the things that we do. You tell us that it is by grace that we are saved through faith. Help us to have that grace at work in our lives. Lord, we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.